Welcome to Inside Magazine. Cannabis, often prohibited, sometimes tolerated, not yet legalized. Well, this plant is considered highly controversial. However, its therapeutic properties have now been revealed and it's considered medically beneficial. In Israel, researchers, pioneering physicians, and committed patients have led a revolution. And within 10 years, the number of patients treated with cannabis skyrocketed from 200 to 14,000, a world record in the field. And the spectrum of conditions treated by this plant keeps widening. Well, Israel is working to meet the growing demand, but many patients still consider the government's actions insufficient. Well, here's Cannabis, a Medical Revolution by Eitan Haddock. This morning, Misha, a 71-year-old retired truck driver, came with his son for an unusual medical examination at the Tikkun Olam Institute in Tel Aviv, following a complicated surgery. I had a massive cervical spine surgery. I can't feel my head. I feel a weakness and pins and needles in my shoulders and my hands. I feel strong pains. I saw the treatment he received, and we know it didn't bring any improvement. So to begin with, I chose strong strains. Inbal Sikorin is a nurse licensed by the Ministry of Health to lead these sessions to initiate new patients to use cannabis. The first cigarette will be enough for two or three days, okay? The substance is inside. It's a shortened cigarette for this initiation. We'll smoke short puffs. Good luck. Good. Slowly, wait. Okay, that's it. Slowly and release. How's the taste? That's it. No more than two puffs, so you don't feel sick. How's your head? It's going up. In one month from now, I want it here. That's the goal. Thank you very much, really. I feel like I forgot the pain. I feel, I feel inside my body my happiness and also less pain. Just look. Misha is directed to the Tikkun Olam pharmacy in Tel Aviv, the only one in Israel outside the hospitals that's allowed to distribute cannabis. In total, 450 kilos are provided each month to the country's 14,000 prescribed patients. Misha leaves with 20 grams, enough for one month. Cannabis, often prohibited, sometimes tolerated, yet never legalized. This plant, considered a hazardous drug, is highly controversial. However, in recent years, its therapeutic properties have been revealed. Could cannabis consumption be medically beneficial? In Israel, researchers and pioneering physicians, therapists, and committed patients have recently led a revolution. Within 10 years, the number of patients treated with cannabis rocketed from 200 to 14,000, a world record. Pain, cancer, inflammatory or neurological diseases, the spectrum of conditions treated by this plant keeps widening. Greenhouses, specific strains, specialized pharmacies, adapted treatments, Israel has set up an institutionalized policy in order to meet the increasingly growing demand, although many patients consider the government's actions insufficient. In his laboratory at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, 81-year-old professor Raphael Meshulam studies the plant relentlessly. He's a world expert in his field and the first scientist to isolate and synthesize THC, the plant's primary active ingredient, in 1964. Convinced of its therapeutic properties, he's also the first one to have encouraged physicians to prescribe it. As scientists, we've conducted an experiment 40 or 50 years ago. We took the THC. Half of the subjects consumed it in a cake my wife baked. We put it in 10 milligrams. The other half had some cake without those 10 milligrams. After a while, we saw the effect on everybody. Somebody told us it hadn't had any effect on him, for from time to time he burst out laughing. Some others, like my wife, sat on the couch and said, so beautiful, it's a different world. One of them couldn't stop talking. He was a member of the Knesset, so he kept talking. The same amount for different people has a different effect. 
In a state-of-the-art lab, each active ingredient in the plant is extracted and its medical properties are studied. But do such therapeutic properties justify legalization? We must pursue the research on medical cannabis so we can develop treatments in many fields. Medical cannabis is a highly beneficial product and it must be legalized. In Israel, we're very liberal. Approximately 14,000 people have received an authorization to use cannabis. It depends which kind of cannabis, for specific diseases, not for every disease. Pain, pain from cancer, side effects of the cancer treatment, gastrointestinal diseases, that kind of thing. When I was taught by Professor Mishulam about the potential of cannabis, I understood this plant is actually a gift from God. It's nature's medicine factory. Professor Ruven Orr is the head of the bone marrow transplant department at Hadassah Hospital in Jerusalem. For 10 years, he successfully administered cannabis to his patients. He claims this plant offers many advantages. We were the first ones in the world to give cannabis to patients who had bone marrow transplant. One of the most amazing things about medical cannabis is that the addiction level is extremely low. Extremely low. Cannabis has been proven to be efficient in the treatment of neurological diseases where traditional medications are limited. Tom Kirsch from Kibbutz Gat suffers from Tourette syndrome since the age of six. Cannabis has changed his life. That's how it looks like when I'm untreated, unbalanced, and that's a relatively normal state. I started the treatment when I was about halfway through my military service. I got released then. That means I served only one year and a half. During the hospitalizations, they tried to give me all kinds of medications. That one gave me, how do they call it? Uh, Parkinsonis Parkinsonism. It means that the tick stopped, but I had Parkinson's-like tremors instead. It took me a long time to get an authorization. It wasn't easy, but when I finally got it, it was magical, as you're about to see. In recent years, cannabis also turned out to be effective for extreme cases of epilepsy and Parkinson's disease with spectacular results, further shaking up the convictions surrounding traditional medicine. And you inhale. Within a few minutes, it will be really... You'll see, everything will disappear. Mm. Yes, now the ticks are... You can actually see. It will stop. Yes, that's how it works. Like a magic trick. The effects only last a few hours. And although cannabis doesn't cure the condition, it makes it bearable. We made our first steps 10 years ago, and then we started to realize there is a therapeutic potential for children as well. And that's amazing. How are you? That's Liav, and that's Elon. Elon is in first grade, and Liav is in third grade. Liav, just eight years old, had a brain tumor two years ago and is now in remission. That was on his birthday. It was just on. When? There's the date, August 28th. An aggressive chemotherapy suppressed his appetite. His powerless parents could only watch as their child lost a third of his body weight. His appetite only returned when they tried cannabis, and it even alleviated the unbearable pain. Today, Liav is seen by Eti, the nurse who guides him in his cannabis treatment. The Minister of Health says, we're not proud of it. We don't want to become a medical cannabis superpower. It's not such a pride. But manufacturing guns and tanks and all kinds of explosives that kill people, that does make the state of Israel proud. 
But it can't be proud of medical cannabis. It's something that saves and helps millions of people around the world. That's how absurd it is. A child with cancer who has an outbreak, that's an excruciating pain. Nothing except the candy he took helped. For children, the cannabis is consumed in the edible form, often as candy. Are you giving it to me? Yes, do you want it? Yes. Here you go, that's tasty. It's not bad. Until now, Liav hadn't eaten all day. Here, look, the proof in life. I'm happy to see like that. He hasn't eaten since this morning. Look, 10 minutes after taking the cannabis, look how hungry he is. It's unbelievable. On the one hand, it's a dietary supplement created by God. That's on the one hand. On the other hand, no pharmaceutical company can patent it. Three weeks after he began his treatment, we meet Misha at his home. But apparently there's a problem. How are you? How do you feel? I don't feel well. I'm in pain, such pain. I'm getting very nervous. I don't know what to do. In only 10 days, Misha consumed his monthly prescription of cannabis. Deprived of its benefits, his pain torments him once again. Hello? Hopeless, Misha calls his nurse in Baal and tries to receive an additional dose for the pain. I've finished it all. I've been feeling well for 10 days. For the moment, you're allowed to get 20 grams. I'm asking you to divide them so there's enough for the whole month. That means every few hours, you take a few puffs and put the cigarette down. Thank you, thank you. She can't do anything. Only the doctor can. Of course, when it started to expand, the regulators tried to find some ways to supervise it more and how to institutionalize it in an efficient way. That's not easy, I agree. That's not easy at all. I think Israel can set the example as a pioneer and also for how to organize it. I'd expect from Western Europe, of course, but more generally from European countries and from the US to adopt this model. in the studio by Eitan Haddock. Eitan, thanks for joining us tonight. Hello, David. And thank you for bringing us this eye-opening piece here. Well, let me start by taking a look at Liav's father in the story. He seems angry. Why is he so frustrated? And what role, if any, do the large pharmaceutical companies play yeah, for this? Yeah, frustration is, is the word, actually. Well, he's angry at the system, actually, because what he says is that um, it took so long for him to get the uh, authorization. He thinks that the system doesn't go uh, far enough uh, in terms of authorization. Uh, we've seen Misha at the end of the, uh, of, of the report uh, saying that his quantity is not enough. So he thinks that the, the, the whole process, although it, it works, it's still too slow for him. As for the company, the, the, the pharmaceutical company, well, some say that they might have a role in slowing the process because they are losing money, actually. They, this his father, Yaakov, and other patient told me that they don't use their narcotics and their, and their, med and their uh, medicine anymore. They use the plants. So the business isn't completely behind it yet. Mm -hmm. well, let's talk about someone like Liav, children being treated with this medication. I know that's very controversial, very progressive uh, for Israel, especially in the field of epilepsy. Is, yeah. Isn't that correct? I tell you, I, I just say what I, I quote Professor Ruben, or this is extraordinary. To be able to treat children with cannabis is just extraordinary, not only for cancer, past treatment of, of cancer, but also for epilepsy. Uh, children with 100 crises a day, which is unbearable, go as low as two to three crises uh, a day thanks to cannabis. We've seen uh, Tom with the uh, Tourette syndrome. He doesn't shake anymore. Incredible. And, and, and save for Parkinson's. So it works. 
And now also, is this the same product that people are using recreationally, that people are also using medicinally? And, and is this a step towards full legalization, do you think? Okay, first of all, the plant is the plant. This is cannabis. But the uh, the, the, the searchers, the, the, the scientists here in Israel has developed with the Kundalam, the center, that the institute where we are, that we, we met there, they have developed specific species with more or less THE versus CBD, which are the, the, the active principles in the plant to treat specific... Uh, Depending on what it's, yeah, what right. it's for. Again, Eitan, thank you very much for bringing us the story. Thank you very much, David. And thank you for watching it here on Inside Magazine. Be sure to see us again next week at the same time.